you know, any any time you feel one dimensional in a game like that, uh, it's, it's very frustrating, you know. But it um, doesn't mean that the game doesn't stop because you're frustrated. We just got to, you know, find the the rhythm against a defense like that, which was, you know, uh, what that defense did was really force us to to beat man coverage out on the perimeter. Our quarterback had to play well. Our receivers had to play well, and you know, it really forced some single blocks. Uh, up front on the offensive line, and and uh, they did a great job of uh, holding the back in the backfield um, in those past situations where it really eliminated the outlets that the quarterback had yes, if things were to broke down downfield. So it was it was very frustrating. Um, um, however, uh, you know uh, the positive you take out of that is uh, there was another way that was exposed that, that that threw a roadblock in our way, and now we can prepare for that for the future. So we just you you, you take that and you cool. and you grow from it, and you learn from it, and, uh, and educate your players. The next time we see that, uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, be prepared for that. Curtis Samuel looks really good. Is that a close battle between him and Ezekiel, or does Ezekiel have that starting job pretty much wrapped Ezekiel up? Ezekiel is doing more. Uh, He's he's providing more consistency, uh, consistency, excuse me, in, in all phases of our offense right now. Uh, there is definitely a, a place for Curtis Samuel. He does have some value uh, in our perimeter game, and he can run inside. Uh, he's still a rookie, still trying to figure some things out. Uh, obviously, when you get a, a defense like Virginia Tech that throws a curveball at you, Ezekiel Elliott, who's been in the fire a little bit, a little older, maturely handles it a little bit better. You know, so in that respect, uh, he's a little ahead of Curtis Samuel, but Curtis has uh, unbelievable value to this offense right Stand, now. Has Curtis yeah. done anything to surprise you? Or is this kind of what you Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, the thing that surprises me the most about him is this, he, he does have a good maturity about him for a freshman uh, that you do feel comfortable putting him in the game, really, in pretty much any situ situation. He's got some toughness to him. Uh, he'll block a linebacker in the A-gap, and uh, he can definitely do some dynamic things with the football if he gets in space. So. There's no hesitation putting them in the game. Stan, is your group a little frustrated right now, two games into it, though? I mean, they haven't really, you know, had the big game by anybody. I yeah. mean, just explain what's kind of going on in your room and stuff. Well, no, my room my room understands uh, defense. They understand system of defense. That's what they're taught from the moment they walk in the door. And they understand um, if a defense lines up a certain way that they're designed to take away the run game. So they have to be patient in that respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it's a compliment to what we've done here in the past in the run game, uh, the way people are lining up against us right now. But no, their time will come. Uh, there's value in their play when the ball is not in their hands, and they need to understand that. And in today's day and age especially, all those guys have hopes and dreams of playing uh, NFL ball one day. They got to understand that you know, the back that can do it all is the back that's going to get drafted. So. Yeah. How, how do you, though, I mean, obviously everybody keeps talking about, well, Carlos isn't here anymore, but everybody keeps referring to Carlos, you sure. know, what he brought to the offense. This is a different group. I mean, how do you, I don't know, how do you address that, I guess, with your group from the standpoint of maybe somebody stepping up, but it's not going to be necessarily the same kind of offense? Well, you know, uh, yeah, Carlos brought a special demeanor, a special skill set to, to our offense last year. And um, are those guys Carlos? No, they're not Carlos right now. You know, but at the same time, this is a, a different team all around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just Carlos. It's, you know, we're a different offensive line. We have a different quarterback at play. We have, you know, a lot of things different right now. So offensively, we have to fit our skill set, you know. And, um, and uh, you know, what they bring to the day table is a lot different than what Carlos was able to bring to the table last year. So, you know, it's not a positive. It's not a negative. It's just we have to find ways to be productive in a different way. Yeah, you used the word rhythm a little while ago referring yeah. to your offense. So much of good offense and good running offense is guys getting into a yeah. rhythm. You guys got three guys that you're rotating in. How does, how does one guy get into a rhythm? Well, again, you know, we're, we're going to get some very unconventional looks, you know. So um, when, when, a, when an opponent throws a curveball at you, you know, and, and you're seeing some things that are different that force your base offense to make adjustments, you know, um, you got to make big plays. It's not necessarily getting in a consistent rhythm. You got to find a way to make a play, take a shot, get an explosive. You know, it becomes a little sporadic that way. And until you do those things, um, you, you may never really get into it rhythm, you know. Um, 
So uh, come last Saturday, we, we had to do some things that were a little unconventional. You had to have the mindset of taking shots to try to loosen up that defense a little bit. And we had some success doing that at times. And when we did, uh, we were able to get the ball moving on the run game a little bit. And uh, we just weren't able to, to maintain that. You know, there were some mistakes that took place, some things, uh, some penalties, you know, uh, uh, some misassignments, you know, we're, we're a young football club right now and those things took place and they hurt us. So that's what hurt our rhythm on Saturday. But there was opportunity for us to even get in that rhythm. Like, so what's it like for this team though? I mean, you guys faced a team that basically lined up and said, our X's are better than your O's mm -hmm. and we're going to prove it to you in a game plan. You guys aren't in that situation very often here. I mean, how's, how do you guys get through that mentally? Oh, we're fine. I mean, um, you know, again, when you have a young football team that's experiencing things for the first time, uh, for the most part, uh, you, you, you go and you learn from that, you, you implement it into your practice routine, and you get better at that. That's, that's, that's all you have to do. I mean, that's all you can do, really. You know, what happened on Saturday happened. We can't press rewind and change the end result of that. You know, but we can learn from that, and we will learn from that. And, um, you know, sure, it's frustrating, but... Um, it really exposed the things that we need to work on. Stan, how much of what you're doing this week is kind of lifting players' spirits, kind of making them realize this isn't the end of the season? You've got a lot of games left. A great question. Uh, the, the beauty of coming. You get that a whole lot. So. No, you don't. You're <laughs> handsome. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I will tell you this. Uh, the mindset of this football team is, is a very together, cohesive unit. Um, not one player is pointing a finger at a, at a coach or another player or a position group or anything like that. We've been trained uh, here and we spend a lot of time and a lot of investment in training the mindset of our kids before we even get into uh, a true real life uh, adverse situation. So yes, this hit us hard and yes, we are uh, hurting and licking our wounds for, from it right now. But at the same time, we had a very high energy practice yesterday with a lot of kids motivated uh, to move forward, all right? And that was something that uh, I was very good to see for us. So. Stan, when this uh, kind of offense is at the, doing, it's performing at its peak, yeah. are you guys in between the tackles more? Are you outside more with your running backs? I mean, how do you envision it when you guys get there? And, uh, you know, just based on the personnel that you have at the position, it's a lot different than what you had last year, like you said. You got to do both in this offense. I mean, you, to sit there and say, if we establish the inside run, then we're going to get in the rhythm that we want solely. That's not true. You know, to, to be a pure inside running team with no threat of running outside and this offense is not good. You know, so we need to become a running football team again so we can support the pass, support the play action, and we got to do it inside and outside. Is Ezekiel your best option in the inside right now? Ezekiel is the best option of being the, the most consistent all-around back right now, and that is running inside and outside, and yes. And blocking, yes. Stan, is Urban handling losses any different than he did during his time in Florida? Ooh. Wow, you got me on that question. Uh, I would have to say absolutely yes. You know, um, we're encouraged. Uh, this one hurts. This is, make no doubt about that. This, this loss is not a comfortable loss by any stretch for any of us. You know, but, um, you know, uh, we're very, very encouraged, as Urban is very, very encouraged by a bunch of uh, motivated young men that want to make it right. I mean, they're in here already on their own, watching film, studying the next opponent. Nobody's reflecting um, emotionally on this game right now. We're, we're moving forward, you know. So with that in mind, that allows all of us, including Urban Meyer, to be very positive about the future of our program. Just out of curiosity, the time that you would have spent at Champions Dinner, what did you spend it doing? We still ate dinner. It just wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it just wasn't the same quality of food, you know. But um, what was that dinner? What was it? You know, I don't even remember. I, you know, I just I remember something. I remember swallowing something. You know, but um, it, 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 it did its purpose. <laughs> Stan, with the, the speed that people have talked about with this team, yeah, guys like Curtis or Don Trey or Jalen, you know. Should you be able to get those guys going and attack with them against any defense? Absolutely. You got to protect your quarterback. Yeah, we have to do a better job of protecting our quarterback, a young quarterback who's experiencing some things for the first time. 
You know, we, we've got to make him feel uh, confident in the people around him. Okay, we got to give him an opportunity to, to expose his talents and, and distribute the football, which he's very good at, by the way. You know, and uh, on Saturday, we did not give him an opportunity to do that. So, you know, if you can't get your quarterback um, comfortable in the pocket, uh, feeling great about executing plays, then uh, I don't care who you're playing, you're, you're going to have a tough time winning that ball game. Stan, how does your approach uh, from a recruiting standpoint change when you have a big weekend like this in a big time environment against a big time opponent and then things don't go well? It's the first time it's happened since you've been here. So. How's the approach different for you and the coaching staff when, when you have guys like that here and things don't go the way you hope? No, you, you, you have to recruit um, exposing the big picture of what this program is about. You know, I know we live in the now here, you know, but we've got to, uh, we have to kind of have some foresight of where this program is going. This program is uh, going to be very dynamic here very soon, all right? And, and players who have the maturity enough uh, to see that, uh, one loss doesn't change our opportunities to get great recruits. How, how, how tough is it to keep that sales pitch yesterday morning, you know, the day after a loss like that and stuff where, the, for example, where the running backs didn't have a great night mm -hmm. because of this, that, and the other? I mean, just how tough is it to flip that switch for you as an assistant coach? Well, you know, the one thing about recruits is they, they selfishly want to hear how they're going to have, you know, An the impact. ability to impact the football program, you know. So we tell them, um, how they're going to impact this program. And um, that doesn't necessarily involve the win or loss column. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Stan, a couple of players alluded to the fact that last Tuesday's practice wasn't a good one. Um, what's, what's the importance of starting the week off with a good practice? How do you kind of prevent that from happening? And did y'all feel that way too about last Tuesday? Uh, you know, it was a rough practice, but we, we actually designed our practices on Tuesdays to be we call it Bloody Tuesdays. We, we, we give our players the worst case scenarios from what we saw in film. We give them all the pressures. We, we make it so that they don't feel necessarily great coming out of a Tuesday practice. Now, if Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practices, they're still feeling the same way, then we have a problem. You know, we did not feel that way. We felt that we were making the, the proper progress on Wednesday and Thursday to give us an opportunity to win that ball game last when, Saturday. Yeah. When Virginia Tech came out in that bear look and the zero cover and stayed in it, was that a shock to you guys in number two? How close did y'all come last week to simulating the speed of what was coming at you? You know, obviously Bud Foster spent months designing what he threw at you guys, but you know, as you look back now, how much, how much good I guess did you get out of practice last week from the standpoint of all of a sudden they throw something? They haven't really done that a lot. Oh, yeah. Did. Coach Foster did a great job because they hadn't shown a lot of that at all. Yeah. You didn't see a lot of that at all. Maybe two snaps the week prior against William & Mary. Uh, that was it, you know. So we prepared for uh, a total system, a totally different system of defense. And uh, when they came out like that, we have me mechanisms and answers for that. But um, when you have a young football team where you're really concentrated on uh, functional reps during the course of practice and not really practicing against ghosts and yeah. just playing your percentages as you, you know, uh, come up with your tendencies on what you see on film. Uh, to honestly say that we prepared a lot for that, you know, I would be lying to you, okay? Um, but we had some, some answers and during the course of every game you have to make a midstream adjustment and uh, how well you make those adjustments are are very telling to the maturity of your football team a lot of times, you know? Yeah, but it comes down to man-to-man, -to -man, even even with blitz adjustments, Mono, comes down Mono. to man-to-man. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing that you didn't see is you didn't see our kids flinching. Mm -hmm. you, you never saw our kids um, give up. You know, they kept playing the game hard all the way to the last second on that clock. And, uh, but we just need to execute better. Stan, you, you mentioned that this program is on its way to becoming a very dynamic program. This is a program that won 25 games, all of a sudden you guys find yourselves in a situation where you lost three of your last four. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like the program is taking a step back from that winning streak? Absolutely not. Nope. We know what we got here. You know, we know the mindset of our players and we know how much they care about this program. We know the commitment that both the coaching staff and our players have to having success here. So, absolutely not.